Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today on The Overflow. My heart is heavy today because I lost a sibling yesterday. But I wanted to honor the commitment that I made to the Lord that if he pours into me that I will pour out to you. The very reason that I started to do The Overflow was to be able to speak to the hearts of even family and, and friends and anyone who would listen to bring Jesus to you. And so I wanted to still honor that commitment. You know, we pray, we reach out to God. We understand the importance of praying because we believe that that is how we get our answers. But the thing that the Lord has been stirring in my heart is to remember, you know, he reminded me and it's so interesting that it was all of this week, you know, that he was reminding me that it's not just us praying to Jesus, but Jesus is praying for us. You know, I don't know if you ever stop to consider that he's praying for you, that Jesus is standing in the gap. The scripture tells us that he is at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. When the scripture speaks about intercession, it means that he is our mediator. He's making a case for us. He is speaking to God on our behalf. He is blocking for us. You know, this, it, it even says that, you know, he stands in the gap for us so that he makes up that gap where we fall short many times. It is Jesus that stands in the gap and says, I can cover them. I can help them. I can help them to make it into this heaven. Because that is Jesus' whole heart. And so he intercedes for us. The scripture says even that he lives to intercede for us. That shows us the heart of Jesus. He ascended into heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he sees as his purpose to cry out to, to, to the Father for us. Why? What is he crying out for? He's crying out that we will live this life on the earth and that we will make it to be with him in heaven. Jesus' whole heart, just think about it, that he went on the cross to die. He gave his life so that we could make it to be in heaven, that we could be a part of his heavenly family. That is why he paid such a great price. And he did not want to pay that price and then get to heaven waiting for us to make it and then not pray for us. Because Jesus is the one who taught us the importance of prayer. So he understands the importance of prayer. And because of that, he prays for us. He stands in the gap and he cries out for us. I want us to get a picture of what that intercession looks like. There's a story in the Bible or I should say an account in the Bible because it's not a story as many of us would just think of a story. It's an account in the Bible of something that happened. There was a time when with Moses and Aaron, they were leading the people of Israel. And some men rose up against them. And the leader of those men was Korah. And they rose up in a rebellion against Moses and Aaron. Because they felt that, you know, why do you all feel that like you all could lead us and all of that? And God stepped in because he saw the insubordination and he saw the rebellion and what it could do to the people and God stepped in and he destroyed Korah and his followers and when God did that the people of Israel started to cry out and feel sorry for these men who had rebelled against God and they started to say to tell Moses and Aaron they said y'all killed God's people Look at what you did because they, they looked at it as though Moses and Aaron, that they killed them. When really and truly the earth opened up and literally swallowed Korah and all those who had rebelled against God. But to get to the intercession, when the people started to rise up, they gathered and you know the congregation came together against Moses and Aaron. The wrath of God was poured out because he was like, I just saved these people from the infection of that rebellion. I saved them from what that rebellion could have done to them. And instead of being thankful to me, they are crying for those who caused the rebellion. 
and the wrath of God was poured out. And God said to Aaron and Moses, he says, move aside, move away from this people so that I could consume them. God was ready to pour out his wrath upon them because it was justified. And we better understand that God is always justified. God is just in whatever he does. He is not an unfair God. And oh, if we could just understand and see the heart and the love of God, we will see how he worked with us. He works with us. He covers us. He does what, he does what it takes to help us to make it. That is the heart of God. And so God said, I am going to pour out my wrath. And when Moses and Aaron realized the seriousness of the moment, they realized that the people were going to be destroyed. They fell on their faces before God and they started to cry out. And Moses, while still on his face, he said to Aaron, go quick and get a censer off of the altar with the fire from the altar you put that in the censer and he says run run into the midst of the people and put this censer there so that it will be an atonement so that it will cover so that it will be the price for the sin and the rebellion of the people and Aaron did just that and he ran into the midst of the people and he put that censer. And when he put it, the plague had already started. There was a plague that started to destroy the people. And the people just started to fall like flies. But when Aaron got into the midst of the people and he put down that censer, this plague just stayed. It just stopped right there. And it did not go any further. I want us to get the picture of what Jesus does for us. Because many times we rise up in rebellion against God. Many times we want to accuse God of being unfair and of being unjust. But God, Jesus himself, sees the heart of man. He sees how the heart of man and the things that we do could bring the wrath of God upon us. And Jesus steps and he runs into the middle of the people. He runs into our midst and he says, he cries out to almighty God and he says, stay your hand, stay your hand. Jesus is like that censor that comes into the midst of the congregation, into the midst of the people and says to God, I am here, stay your hand. I know that they deserve to be judged. I know that they deserve to die. I know that the penalty of the sin that you look upon, it deserves their death. But I, I stand in the gap for them. I am their mediator. I paid for them with the price of my blood. I died on that cross. And he stands there. And when God looks on Jesus, I know many times we feel that we escape many things because of our goodness. But I want you to know that we escape because Jesus is the one that stands. And Jesus is the one that the Father looks on. And when he looks on Jesus, he sees the price that Jesus paid. And he honors the mediator. And he hears the cry of the intercessor. What is Jesus crying out? Living. What is he living? And the right hand of almighty God to do. To cry out for us. And what is he crying out? We saw many prayers in the Bible. When Jesus would pray for his disciples. And he would pray. He would say father keep them. Keep them. You know I, I looked at the way that God has, he kept my brother, he kept him. He, he, he robbed death more than once and he kept him. And now I commit him into the hands of almighty God. Because God is a fair and a just God and he looks on the heart of man. But I want you to know that the cry of Jesus and Jesus would have been praying for my brother. It was not just me praying for him, but Jesus was praying for him. And, this, and it says, he prays, keep them. 
keep them, Lord. Keep them. He also prays. He prays that they will be one. Jesus prays for our unity. He wants all those who believe in Jesus Christ, all those who believe in him to be one, to be joined together, to not fight with each other, to not war against each other. He wants us to stand hand in hand because we have a united enemy and our fight is not against one another. Our fight is against the devil. Our fight is against the one who does not want us to make it into the heavenly kingdom. That is who our fight is with. It's not with each other. And so he says, stand together. And Jesus is there on the right hand of the Father, praying, my people, stand together. Be one. Be one. It is his prayer for us. He prays for us to overcome. Because he knows that as we live upon this earth, we are in the midst of a war. And he prays, let them overcome. Let them be overcomers in the same way that I overcame on this earth. And he says, oh, let them love. Let them be examples of love. Let when the world out there looks on the people that name the name of Jesus, called by my name. He said, when they look, let them see love on this people. Let them see the heart of God. He prays this. He prays many other things. But I want you to know that we are in good hands when Jesus has set his eyes upon us. And when he would be the one praying for us. Don't stop praying. But I want you to remember today that we have a high priest that is set up on the heavens and he's making intercession for us. He is fighting for us to the last day, to our last breath. Jesus will fight for us. He's fighting for you. When Peter, Simon Peter, was going to go through his greatest trial upon the earth, he did not know what was coming upon him. He did not know that the devil had some plans for him. And Jesus told him, he said, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. He said he wants to sift you like wheat. He wants to take you and toss you up in the air and cause you to fall upon the earth. He wants to crush you. He wants to destroy you. He said, Peter, it is coming because that is what the enemy wants to do. He said, but I have prayed. He said, I prayed for you, Peter. And what did Jesus pray when he knew what was coming upon Peter? He said, I have prayed that your faith fail not. Don't lose your faith, Peter. He said, I'm not just encouraging you, Peter, to not lose your faith. He said, but I have prayed for you. And when Jesus prayed, because the Father looks upon him, because the Father honors him more than he could ever even honor us, he honors us when we pray, because we pray in Jesus' name. So, oh my gosh, when Jesus himself would be the one praying. The father honors that prayer. I want you to know he's praying for you. Don't resist the power of his prayers. Don't resist the call and the pull of God upon your heart. Don't resist him. Because he's praying. Because of the magnitude of the love that he has for you. And today I pray that you will walk in that love, that you will live in that love, that you will draw close to Jesus, that you will call upon his name, that you will call upon him and say, Jesus, I call upon you and I thank you for standing in the gap for me, for making up the hedge for me. For making sure that where I fall short, that the Father does not look on me, but he looks on you. And he sees me through your sacrifice. And he sees me through your blood. But people, I want to tell you, if you want the Father to see you through the blood of Jesus, you need to get behind Jesus. You need to follow Jesus. 
You need to surrender your life to Jesus. And today that is my encouragement in honor of my brother who I love with all my heart. I want to lead you in this prayer. And I pray that you will say it because you will understand the love that Jesus has for you. Say, Lord Jesus, today I recognize that I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But Jesus, you paid the price. And you made the atonement for my sin. You ran into the midst to save me. And so, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And I will live for you from this day forward. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Amen. If you have said this prayer, I have an email address attached to this program. It's the overflow tt at gmail.com. Send me an email and I could encourage you in this walk with the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for joining me again on the overflow. I will see you again next week. This is what it is about. It's about connecting you with Jesus. Amen. God bless you.